Have you ever wondered how to manipulate how much light enters the lens of your photo or video camera? By the time this video is done, I'll have taught you how and why to do it. This is the fourth video in a series of seven total on basic camera functions that I've done. I'll link to those and to many other videos on improving your videography and photography skills in the comment section below and both during and at the end of this video as well, so stay tuned. If you want to learn more, remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every week on Wednesday. By the end of this video, you'll have a thorough understanding of your camera's iris and how it affects your images. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a videography, photography, and technology guru that created this blog to help you to become Tech Savvy Senior. My tips and advice are useful to anyone, but my specific focus is in helping senior citizens to become more familiar with technology to improve and better their lives. If you have a camera question, leave a comment below. I do read all the comments that people leave, and yes, I do personally respond to each and every one of them as well. The iris is an adjustable opening known as the aperture or the opening inside the lens which controls the amount of light coming through the lens to the film or image sensor. The light inside the lens is controlled by the diaphragm. Essentially, the diaphragm is a set of metal plates or leaves that open and close to make a larger or smaller hole. The diaphragm is mounted in between the glass elements of a lens. When it's open all the way, the lens admits as much light as possible. When it's a tiny hole, obviously it doesn't admit as much light. The diaphragm openings or apertures are called F numbers or F stops. They're assigned numbers according to the diameter of the diaphragm opening, expressed as a ratio of the focal length of the lens. The amount of light coming through the lens is called the exposure. The video camera iris works in basically the same way as a still camera iris. As you open the iris, more light comes in and the picture appears brighter. The difference is that with video cameras, the picture in the viewfinder changes brightness as the iris is adjusted. Professional cameras have an iris ring on the lens housing, which you turn clockwise to close and counterclockwise to open. Consumer lever cameras usually Use either a dial or a set of buttons, something maybe even in the menu. You will probably need to select manual iris from the menu in order to control this. So see the manual for your specific camera for details. Now how do you achieve the correct exposure? Here's the most basic but informative definition I can offer of exposure and why you want to correct it. It's how bright or how dark your image is. If a photo or video is too bright, it's considered overexposed. Too dark, and it's considered underexposed. The Goldilocks approved version of almost any picture is what's known as proper exposure. You know, the one that's just right. It's neither too dark nor too light. All other bits aside, when people talk about getting a properly exposed image or tweaking the camera settings to get a good exposure, all it really means is getting an image that's not too bright or too dark. It's up to you as an artist to know not only how to get an image that's properly exposed, but how to adjust your camera settings to get the exposure that you want. Before using your manual iris to achieve the exposure that you do want, you need to know what the correct exposure looks like in the viewfinder. Now a note, if your camera has the option to adjust the viewfinder settings, You'll want to do that first, then adjust the camera settings. A good start is to set your camera on auto iris and frame a shot with a nice even light. Notice how bright the picture is. Then set the iris to manual. Most cameras will retain the same exposure as set by the auto iris feature, which you can adjust from there as you go. Open and close the iris, then try to set the exposure where it was before. Always set your iris so that the subject appears correctly exposed. This may mean that other parts of the image may be too bright or too dark, but the subject is the most important thing. 
so it needs to be exposed properly. Professional video cameras have an additional feature called zebra stripes that appear in the viewfinder which can help you to judge your exposure. Practice is the only way to get the exposure right. Record a number of shots in different lighting conditions and then play them back to see how good your exposure was. Remember, if you're not sure about your exposure, try flicking the iris to auto and see what the camera thinks. Then go back to manual control and this should give you an idea where you should be. In time, you'll come to trust your own instincts more than the camera itself. So if this is all making sense to you, put Tech Savvy Senior in the comments section below. Before I wrap up, I just want to give you a word of warning and that is to watch out for backlighting. Common difficulty with exposure is what to do in uneven lighting situations. The strong backlight scenario is a headache. This is where your subject is set against a much brighter background, say they're sitting inside but in front of an open window, and as such, they look too dark or in silhouette or the window is too bright. Assuming that you can't change your framing or add more lighting to the subject, the only option is to open the iris up until the subject is exposed correctly. This will mean that the background, the window, is too bright, but it's better than the subject being too dark. Remember, the rule of thumb for iris control is set your exposure for the subject and worry about the rest later. Everything else is secondary. My question of the day is, when did you have trouble shooting photos and videos because of exposure issues? Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know. If you want to see more videos like this, follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, for more. Think what you saw was great? Go ahead and like it. If you have an opinion? Comment below. Do you know someone who could benefit from the information I provided? Then share the video. Do you want to learn even more? If so, then connect with Jim Costa Films on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the web. I currently have over 4,200 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Now, I also have a new Facebook group as well called Video Producers and Content Creators. So look for that on Facebook to connect there, join the group, and get even more pro tips and tricks.